So the research of my group is focused very much on new ways of repairing human tissues. You're probably very aware that human tissues are damaged by disease or they wear out or they are injured in trauma, in accidents. And as we get older, the challenge in repairing that tissue gets more difficult. And everything we do here really is about trying to boost that regenerative capacity. So one example of that regenerative technology is tissue engineering, which we do very much in this research group here. What essentially that is concerned with is taking some living human cells, culturing them on a scaffold in a favourable environment and recapitulating and regrowing functional human tissues for reimplantation therapeutically. My own personal particular interest in that field is actually on the scaffold itself. And so while the cell is the very exciting bit, the living organism that's doing all of the work, the scaffold is the material framework, not unlike the scaffold you'd see on a building site, the material framework on which the cell is sitting in tissue engineering. And I think the scaffold is, is really an exciting opportunity for so many reasons. So primarily, the scaffold is often a synthetic material and this is something that's relatively easy to manufacture and turn into a product, and a product that can be made in Sheffield or made anywhere and sold on the market. And so as a means of creating jobs and creating wealth, the scaffold is a fantastic opportunity. In addition, scientifically, the scaffold gives us a great opportunity to present things to the cells that will motivate or make the cells do the things that we want them to do. So for example, I have a colleague working with us now putting small peptides, small subgroups of proteins onto the scaffold in order to recruit cells and direct them down the bone making pathway and that's the kind of technology which we're going to see deployed more and more in medicine in the very near future to improve the reparative and regenerative capacity of the interventions that surgeons have today. Sporting injuries are fascinating they, they often occur in people who are pushing themselves to the limits of human performance arguably as a result of pushing themselves to the limits of human performance and, and when we have trauma uh, to cartilage or injuries like that they, they present a great opportunity. On the one hand you've got a very high value individual who needs to get back to that level of performance in order to, 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 to earn their income and get the, and do the things they enjoy doing. In that way then they're not necessarily different to anybody else, they just happen to be at the peak of physical performance. The other thing that's very exciting about sporting injuries is that because they're in young people, they're often people who have an inherent quite a high degree of regenerative capacity of their own. So if we can, as it were, reach in and make use of the young person's regenerative ability to get a good functional repair using tissue engineering, that is a wonderful thing. And there are already primitive tissue engineering therapies using cultured living cells to repair, for example, cartilage in young people with, with really encouraging results coming out. Also in terms of the devices we see, uh, for example, even in Team Sky there's a cyclist who's had some repairs undertaken with medical devices and he illustrates very clearly that we can now repair the body with a synthetic device and achieve that level of performance, uh, an elite athlete level of performance. But I think really that is the most that we can achieve with devices now without bringing other technologies in to really boost the repair among the normal people of the population and especially the aging population where the challenges are far greater.